again. Happy New Year. As I was <clears throat> thinking about what to talk about today, I realized that when we begin our church year, we always talk about new beginnings and starting over a new church year. And sometimes I feel like it can get kind of old when we talk about the same thing over and over, even though it's something that we should hear. There are some topics that we do discuss over and over. How to show love to our neighbor, doing good, shunning evil, how to treat others, the list goes on and on. And then we come to the new year and we talk about resolutions. Everyone is supposed to have a resolution, something they want to do new and different, losing weight, exercising more, reading the Bible from cover to cover, meeting new goals. Again, the same thing over and over. Has anyone made a resolution yet? No, it's still kind of early, right? But we're expected to. If you can do that and stick with it, I am impressed with your willpower. It's not easy trying to make a change cold turkey. But I, lately, I have seen some online videos where these res resolutions take a slight turn. They aren't the usual stop something and switch to another, but they're using the realization that change happens over time. To do one thing, however small and, and insignificant to others, may be very significant to yourself and to just stick with it. Because really, there is no reason to get overwhelmed. But what I want to focus on today is what we can do for ourselves, for our neighbors, our church, and our community. As for ourselves, one of the best things we can do is realize that we are human. We make mistakes, and we vow to ourselves to do better. This year, I'm going to whatever it is we think will make us happier. But in order to do that, we have to know what makes us truly happy. So just think for a moment. What makes you truly happy? For myself, at this particular stage of my life, it is spending time with my family, friends, my children in those rare instances when they're both home, becoming a better pastor through reading and studying the Bible, we are all at different stages in our lives. And what is important to one person can be very different for someone else. We also need to know that taking time for ourselves is not selfish. It's okay to take a minute to breathe and refocus. Self-care is important for all of us. So now that we've kind of looked at ourselves and what's important to us, what can we do for our neighbor? Our affirmation of faith tells us exactly what we can do. This is his commandment, that we love one another as he has loved us. That's it? All I have to do is love everyone? Seems simple enough. Until maybe we get hurt by somebody. Until maybe we hear that someone doesn't love us. Or somebody being unkind to others. But all of these instances are part of being human. I've told my children in the past, I love you, but I don't like what you did. But that helps us to remember to continue to love. 
we do have a great tool at our disposal at any time that God has given us. Forgiveness. I know that forgiveness is a hard thing to do. But we just need to have a conversation with God about wanting to forgive. To truly want to forgive someone, it can happen. We may be unable to forgive someone face to face to have that confrontation to try and heal a relationship. But we do know that God is there and we can ask for help. Once you have taken that step and have forgiven someone with God's help, you can say that you have truly and you do honestly love your neighbor. So now what about our church? What can we do for our church? Any ideas? Throughout my life, I have heard from many people and have visited many churches. I've heard people say, well, the church only wants my money anyway. They're always asking for it. Sure, there are churches who always do that. That's their focus. And we all know that any church certainly does need financial support, similar to any organization that's a nonprofit. Funding is a part of the whole. There are so many ways to support a church. Attending services, taking part in discussion groups, being a part of the board, becoming a member, the list goes on and on. How do you feel that you contribute to church? This is a question that only you can answer individually. We all have busy lives and should evaluate our loves and priorities every so often so that we are being true to ourselves. Now lastly, what can we do for our community? for the greater world, how, how can we do this? Again, it should be something that you care about, something that's a priority, that's a love for you. Something that the Sunday School will be doing this spring is to support a community effort, whether in our town or the greater world. And we actually went through this this morning, I, I did a small exercise, had the children fold the paper twice, four little squares, and they wrote about how they can help themselves. And we talked about not being selfish, but to, to take care of ourselves so we can help others, and how they can help others, how they can help our church and help the world. And they got very excited about making blankets, the Thai fleece blankets, um, for maybe the nursing home that's in town. So their, their eyes lit up and, you know, just wanted to be helpful. Teaching our children to think about others and caring for them will stay with them their whole lives. And as adults, we support causes in our world that are important to our family. We all know someone who has been affected by cancer or diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. We make donations hoping for a cure and more research. It's important to support something in our world. Sitting at home watching the chaos around us and not doing anything about it shows we're really not doing our part. God did some pretty amazing things to help our world, and we can too. This seems like a lot to think about on the first day of a new year, but we have a blank slate, a new beginning. I saw an online post from a friend that said, we have a blank book with 365 pages to fill in. Make it a good book. So let's do that. Bring more positivity into our lives, to our neighbor,
to our church, and to our community. So I have a little challenge. And if you look at your insert, I'm going to challenge us to read through the Bible in one year. I found a great reading plan that includes an Old Testament reading and a New Testament reading each day. And I didn't want to just do the old, let's do cover to cover. I wanted to mix it up so that we had um, you know, a little bit of variety. Obviously, there are some parts of the Bible that are just difficult to get through. But write down your questions. Bring them. Let's talk about them. We have our Connect the Dots discussion group on the, the fourth Sunday or the last Sunday of the month. I would love to be able to just try to do that, even if, you know, we can't get through every single verse or chapter, but, but to make an effort, and I think that will make a difference, and I really want to bring our church community together, and, and I think this is something that's reasonable. So I am hoping that this year will bring happiness, honesty, positivity, and much love and peace to all of you. So let us make this a great book to look back on. Amen.